The last section is, it involves a different type of argument than the symbolic arguments that we were just doing. And it also takes us full circle to the very, one of the first things we talked about in the logic section, uh, this unit, was the idea of a quantified statement. Now, if you don't remember the quantified statement, here is a little hint for the test, by the way. I told you this when we talked about it. When we talked in the first section about negation, that was the first connective we talked about. And then we, we said, and it was real easy, the negation just changes the truth value. We added some knots in, you know, Mr. Perkins is not balding, right? If you remember that problem. But then we negated quantified statements. There's going to be two of those on the test. Okay, so when you're reviewing, make sure that you can that you can accurately negate quantified statements. Now, quantified statements, in case it's been a long time for you, are these statements right here. They start with one of three words, either all, okay, no or none, or some. Okay, those are quantified statements. So we are going to now talk about what's uh, arguments that involve quantified statements. And when you have an argument that involves a quantified statement, it's called a syllogistic argument. Okay, so again, another word that's a mouthful. It's a syllogistic argument when it involves quantified statements. Now, there's a very famous mathematician, a German dude, long time ago. His name's Leonard Euler. That's pronounced Euler, not Euler. I messed that up when I first started learning math too. So uh, Len Leonard Euler, he did all sorts of cool things. In fact, if you take MGF 1107 with me in the fall, okay, we'll have an amazing time. Euler, funny story. I'm not going to tell you just because we don't have time, but he invented a whole branch of math mathematics in order to solve a puzzle. And it's a fun, it's my favorite unit in the next class. So if you have, if you need three more math credits, uh, I'd love for you to take that. Anyway, so Euler, he, uh, he also did some work in logic and we're going to use just circles that are named after him, Euler diagrams to, to determine if these arguments are valid or not. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you how to draw the circles for each of the three different syllogistic statements. And once you know how to do that, you're gonna be able to determine if the argument's valid or not. It's just that, it's just that quick and clean. So first one, my first statement is all dogs are brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use circles uh, to represent these things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a circle to represent dogs. Okay, so I'm going to have my dog circle representing all the dogs, and I'm going to have a circle that represents brown things. Okay, so disassociate yourself a little bit from, hey, all dogs aren't brown, right? But we're just as we're going to draw a circle that represents this statement. Don't worry about whether it's true or false. Okay, so here we go. If you start off with an all statement, what that means is you're going to have two circles, one inside the other. So here is one circle. Here is another circle. Okay, one side, one's inside the other. Now I want a hypothesis, and if you're right on this, great. If you're wrong on this, that's okay. It's going to be an opportunity to learn which circle. If all dogs are brown, okay. If every dog that I encounter is in is a, is a brown thing, which circle do you think is going to be the dog circle? The smaller one or the bigger one? Yeah, the smaller one. All dogs are brown. So you guys did good. My, my class yesterday had a little more trouble with that. So here we go. This is all my dogs. So these are all the dogs. And then the bigger circle represents the brown things. Okay, there must be other brown things according to this universe that this statement belongs to. You with me so far? A nice way to remember this, because I know as you're learning this for the first time, you want to know, whatever word is closest to the all is always going to be the smallest circle. All, whatever that next word is, is always going to be the smaller circle. Okay, so now we have the statement, no dogs are brown. Well, how do you think I'm gonna draw the two circles if no dogs are brown things. They're gonna be separate, yeah, perfect, well done. It doesn't matter where you orient them on the, in this square, this universe, just make sure that they're not touching. Okay, so this is my dog circle, this is my brown thing circle, and they don't touch, no dogs are brown. You track it with me? Okay, one more, some dogs are brown. How do you think some dogs are brown? How do you think those circles are gonna interact? Yeah, like a Venn diagram, great memory. Nice pull from, uh, from what we talked about in the, the last unit. Yes, they're gonna overlap a little bit. So here's my dog circle. Here's my brown thing circle. And what you've actually communicated is two things with that. 
In here where they intersect, those are the sum dogs that are brown. How would you describe the dogs out here in this part of the circle? These dogs are what? Not brown, perfect, well said. So you've actually communicated two things about dogs with, with those circles. So if the, if the statement up here was some dogs are not brown, you would have drawn the same two circles. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, so those are the three diagrams that we are gonna take advantage of to, to do these arguments. So here we go. This first argument involves a, a, a quantified statement and then just a regular statement about an individual. Uh, so the first couple are gonna do this just so that we can get used to doing it. And then, uh, then our arguments will be all quantified statements after that. So just like with our symbolic statements, the, the things that come before the therefore, these are the premises. After the therefore, this is my conclusion. Conclusion is with an N. There we go. So here's what you're gonna do. And if you need to make note of this, cause you might forget this later, then definitely do this. You draw the premises. And then you look at the drawing and say, does that drawing mean I have to come to this conclusion? You do not draw the conclusion. Okay, so that's usually the only mistake students sometimes make on this is they will draw the conclusion. You do not draw this. You determine if from what you've drawn from these first two uh, statements, if you have to come to that. Now, if, if you need to, then just cover that up, you know, put a piece of paper there and cover it up. And, and there we go. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start. All college courses are fun. Okay, so I'm gonna draw two circles. It's an all statement. So I'm gonna draw one circle inside the other. Which is the smaller circle? The courses, yes, college courses. I'm just gonna abbreviate. I'm just gonna call that courses. And then the bigger circle is the circle of fun things. All, co all college courses are in the circle of fun things. There's other fun things, but definitely college courses are in it. Okay, the next premise is not a quantified statement. There's no all or some or none. So what that tells me is I don't need a circle. I'm just gonna use like a little X to indicate where this particular thing is. So the next statement says, MGF 1106, the class you are in, is a college course. So where am I gonna put the X? Yeah, I'm gonna put it right here inside. The, is there any other option? So I'm just gonna abbreviate MGF, probably should have made my boxes bigger. Is there any other option? Could I have put the X out here for MGF 1106? No, because then it's outside the college courses. That's not what that premise said. I couldn't put it out here because it's outside the college. This says it has to go in the college courses circle. There's no other place. Okay, we have drawn the premises. Is everybody with me? Is there any question about those two things? Now, looking at this picture is the only conclusion that I can come to. Do I have to make this conclusion that MGF 1106 is fun? Does MGF 1106 have to be in the fun circle? Yeah, it does. It's not a trick question. I'm not setting you up to fail there. The reason it has to be in the fun circle is because MGF 1106 has to be in the courses circle. And the courses circle, according to the premise up here, has to be in the fun circle. So that's why this one here is a valid argument. It's valid because there's no other conclusion I can make. I'm gonna do the next one with you. And then on the other, the next, I think I've got like five or six that you're gonna work, but I'm just kind of giving you the, uh, an example. That's a valid argument. Spoilers, this next one's not gonna be valid and we're gonna, we're gonna see why. Okay, so here we go. Example two says, some nurses work in pediatrics. Okay, so I need two circles. It's a sum statement. So I'm gonna draw them as a Venn diagram, like we said earlier. So some nurses, I'm gonna have a nurse's circle and then I'm gonna have a pediatric circle. You with me so far? Don't let me do something that you don't like. Okay, the next premise, again, is not a quantified statement. The next premise is telling me about an individual, an individual named Lisa. Lisa works in pediatrics. Okay, so forget everything else. 
this statement right here, Lisa works in pediatrics, tells me that the X I write for Lisa has to be in what circle? Yeah, it doesn't say anything else. Okay, so if I put Lisa's circle or if I put Lisa's X right here, does that meet that premise? But if I put Lisa's X right here, does that meet the premise? So the thing that we're noticing is that there's more than one place that I could put Lisa's X and it matches that middle statement, right? Okay, so then let's now, we've drawn, we've drawn, the, we've drawn the premises. Let's, do I have to, is the only conclusion I could come to that Lisa is a nurse? No, no, we're not told. We're not given enough information. If Lisa is right here, yeah, she's a nurse. But if Lisa's out here, she's a doctor or she's something else. I don't know what. Okay, so there's other things. So that's why this one, because there's more than one uh, allowable place for that, that's why this is an invalid argument. You do not have to come to that conclusion based on the given information. We would need a little bit more. Does everyone see the difference? Okay, that's as hard as syllogistic arguments get. So you just need to practice now, okay? So what I'd like you to do is the top of the next page, example three. I'm gonna give you 90 seconds or two minutes, draw your circles, determine if that's valid or invalid. All right, so here we go. The first statement says all ballerinas are athletic. So I know right away it's an all statement. So it doesn't matter what the words are just yet. Since it's an all statement, that means I've got one circle inside the other. And according to that statement, which one's going to be the smaller circle? Okay, the ballerinas. I'm just going to abbreviate there and then athletic okay, out there. Great. So the next statement says Russell is athletic. Okay, so I got to put an X for Russell here somewhere. Can I put Russell's X here? Does this violate that premise? Can I put Russell here? Does this violate the premise? No, Russell just has to be in the athletic circle. So because of that, again, do I have to come to the conclusion that Russell is a ballerina? No, Russell could be, nothing wrong with it, but... I don't know. I'm not given enough information to come to that conclusion. So this is invalid. All right, what I would like you to do is give your best shot to example four. This one has two, uh, this one has two uh, quantitative statements. So you're gonna draw your circles for the first one. And then your second one is gonna ask you to draw a third circle. So I just wanna see how you do. If you get this one wrong, that's okay. The next example is exactly like it, okay? So you're gonna get your chance to redeem yourself. So have no fear, do your best.
All right, so remember, if you didn't quite get this one, that's okay. This one's a little different. So don't beat yourself up. Don't, don't shame yourself. We're just trying to learn here. So the first statement is all earth people have two arms. Okay, so it's an all statement. So I need one circle inside of the other. And so the smaller circle is going to be earth people. So I'm just going to write people here. And then the bigger circle is going to be two arms. I'm just going to use the number two to represent that. Okay, so we've got other things with two arms out there. We good so far? Okay, if you got that, then you're doing great. Okay, so this next part, if you didn't get, this is the new part. So again, forgive yourself. The next one says, all people with two arms can fly. So it's another all, all statement. So I'm going to need another circle. But before I go and draw it, according to this statement, which one's going to be the smaller circle, the people circle or the fly circle? The people one should be the smaller one, right? Would everybody agree with that? So because of that, where am I going to draw the things that can fly circle? Yeah, it's going to be even bigger, right? We're going to, we're going to go out and draw another concentric circle. So I'm going to draw my things that can fly out here. Now let's just make sure. Here's my fly circle. My people with two arms are inside of that because that's that that we were told all people with two arms can fly. And then uh, all earth people have two arms. Okay, great. So we've got our three circles, right? Everybody with me on where, how, why I put the circles where I did? Okay. Was there any other way I could have drawn the circles, right? Does, the, does, the, does this people circle, does the earth people have to be inside the two circle? Yeah, so it can't be out here. It's not a sum statement. It can't be intersecting. There's no other way I could have drawn this drawing. So then let's look at this drawing. Do I have to come to this conclusion? Do all earth, or excuse me, all earth people can fly? Is that a true statement or a false statement according to, according to this drawing? Yeah, there's no way that this people, all this, this earth people can be outside of that circle. So this is a valid argument. Okay, so like I said, if you didn't quite get that, I understand because that was a little different. Okay, that involved two quantitative statements. This next one is super similar. Okay, just involves our favorite mammal, the dolphin. So go ahead and give this one a try. So this one says all dolphins are mammals. So again, I need two circles, one inside the other. Which is the smaller circle? Yep, the dolphins are going to be inside the mammal circle. Great. The next one says all mammals are vertebrates. So I need a, again, it's an all statement. It's going to involve a circle for mammals and a circle for vertebrates. I already have a mammal circle there. So where am I going to draw the new circle? Does it go inside the mammal circle or outside the mammals? Outside, because according to this statement, the mammals should be the smaller circle. Okay, so the vertebrates are going to go around. Again, there's no other way that could have been drawn. There's no options uh, where I could have moved one of the circles outside of the other because these are all statements. And so therefore, do I have to draw the conclusion that all dolphins are vertebrates? Yes, again, it's a valid argument. It's the same argument as the previous example. You just got to go through that one on your own. Okay, let's flip the page. Just got a couple more. Try example six.
Okay, so the next one says some caterpillars have fur. Okay, so I need a circle that overlaps with my other circles. So this one, I'm gonna make my caterpillars. This is my things with fur circle. Okay, now I need a new circle. The new circle says all things with fur are mammals. So again, I need a new circle. It's an all statement. So because it's an all statement, which is gonna be the smaller circle? The fur circle or the mammal circle? Which one's smaller? The fur. So I'm gonna draw the mammal circle around it. So we. So do I have to come to this conclusion? According to my drawing, are some caterpillars mammals? Yes, the, the mammal circle has to, it has to somewhere touch the, the, the caterpillar circle because it intersects, with the, it intersects with the first circle. So there we go. This is a valid argument there. Good job. If you got a question, please ask it. We got two more. I'm hoping that it, this is going well for you. I've got a couple of these on the test uh, that you're going to take on Monday. So here you go, example seven. Give this one a try, please. Okay, so the first sentence says all marigolds are annuals. So we're dealing with some flowers here. So all marigolds are annuals. So I'm just going to use an M for marigolds and then an A for annuals. All marigolds are annuals. Okay, so far, so good. Everybody got those circles so far? All right, the next statement says that some tulips are annuals. So I have to draw a tulip circle. According to that statement, the tulip circle intersects with what circle? The annuals. It doesn't say anything about the, the marigold circle. So does this circle right here meet the, does this circle right here meet the criteria? If I draw, if I draw the tulip circle like that, does that meet the criteria? Some tulips are annuals, they intersect. Could, could I draw the circle like this? Would this also be some tulips are annuals? I'm, I'm going outside the box here, sorry about that. But if I drew it like this, does this still say some tulips are annuals? Yes, okay, so again, there is some vagueness about, uh, about this. I'm not given enough information. Do I have to come to the conclusion that some tulips are marigolds? Does the tulip circle have to intersect with the marigold circle? No, it does not, okay, because either of those is valid. That's why this is an invalid argument. We're not, we don't have enough information in our premises. All right, one more. You're almost to the finish line. I appreciate your endurance. So example eight. Yeah. Uh, on the test, you just need to, you're going to have to give me enough information that you're comfortable either saying valid or invalid.
in fact, to speak to that question just before we finish up. So the question, in case you didn't hear it, was, hey, Perkster, do I have to draw every possible iteration of the drawing? The answer is no, uh, you don't have to. What I would recommend you do, if you, if you see that something's gonna be invalid because there's more than one way to draw the drawing, then I would draw the one that contradicts the conclusion, right? So if you just draw this circle right over here, this is the circle that my, my finger is wiggling by, that's the circle that contradicts the conclusion. So that would be the one to draw. Okay, so great question. All right, here's the last problem. It says all Call of Duty players are students. Okay, so all, it's an all statement. So I'm going to draw two circles, one inside the other. So this is a Call of Duty circle. This is my student circle. Okay, and then Joel, so this one goes back to the, the way we started, that this second premise is not a quantified statement, it's just a particular person. Joel is a Call of Duty player, so I'm going to put Joel's X right here. Is there anywhere else that I could draw Joel's X that would match him being a Call of Duty player? Nope, that is it. So does Joel have to be a student? Yes, according to the diagram, certainly. So that is valid. And that is syllogistic arguments.